very delighted to join my next guest. Uh, delightful. Always, always. We're a lovely chat. I didn't realise you lived there. Do you play at the local... Do you? No. Uh, Sean Bell, military analyst, former fighter pilot. How are you? Very well, thank you, Jeremy. How the devil are you? Not bad for an old... 60 next year. Not, not at all depressed about it's not it. not the years, it's the mileage. Thank you very much, Steve. When are you 50? You smooth talking <laughs> devil. <laughs> Listen, I'm really interested. The reason I wanted to talk to you was this sort of... Um, I spoke to Jim Jeters in, in America earlier and he said this has sort of taken a lot of people by, by, by surprise, but not in America. So overnight we learnt that Joe Biden finally authorising Ukraine to use long-range missiles deep inside Russia. This has been around for several months. No, 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 no. Um, I just want to... I know you're not political. I'm convinced that ever since uh, Kamala Harris lost the election, Joe Biden's got a spring in his step. So he can say to everybody, I beat him, you got rid of me, you bunch of idiots. He seems to, he seems to have lost about 10 years of his life, if it's indeed him. Um, why is he authorising this now? To cause trouble for Donald Trump, to try and create a legacy, to show that he is Ukraine's man? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, there's loads of conspiracy theories out there. I'm afraid I'm old and grey, ex-military. I think there's a really clear explanation for it, to be brutally honest. It's running uh, very, very difficult for Ukraine at the moment on the front line. What's clearly happening with Putin is he's pushing everything possible at the front with a view to getting all the territory he can by the 20th of January. Why that? Because that might be the opportunity when they start to negotiate. And at the moment, he's pushing hard in the Donbass. Ukraine's on the back foot. Most importantly, up in Kursk. Remember that incursion yep. where the Ukrainians went in? Yes. Back in August, at the peak, they are now being pushed out of a third of that area. They're hanging on. Russia's pushed 50,000 troops. It's pushed 12,000 North Korean soldiers into the area, throwing everything possible. Can you imagine Putin going to negotiating table, going, uh, you've got part of my Russian territory? He's never going to allow that. Massive pressure on Ukraine. Therefore, everything that can be done to help Ukraine through this difficult hour, I think, is being done. You said long-range, deep into Russia. I'm not sure that's what the American administration is saying. I think they're saying at the moment, anything to do with that Kursk incursion, we will authorise. But what's been interesting is that Russia has already moved most of its fighter jets outside 200 miles away from the Ukrainian border because it knows just how dangerous those attack missiles might be. Um, Donald Trump Jr. accuses Joe Biden of trying to start World War III before his dad becomes president. The trouble is with this is that there will undoubtedly be rhetoric, you and I have spoken before, that actually Putin's fear is the West actually gets involved. Because mm -hmm. if it was to get involved, Russia would be pushed back in a heartbeat. So every time there's an escalation, whether it was anti-tank weapons, whether it was tanks, long-range weapons, F-16s, there's always been this wail from and shaking of the nuclear sabre rattling going on. In harsh reality, I don't expect we're going to see anything because Russia is just so focused. 1,500 casualties a day for the month of October Russia was taking. It's just not sustainable. What they're clearly doing is just trying to get as much territory as possible ready for a potential negotiation. How do you think, as a military man, it isn't political, how do you, if, that's his, if that's his theory, I'm going to push, 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 so that if I arrive at the negotiating table on the 20th of January, because big, big Billy uh, Trump, you know, I know he said the wrong word then, he says I'm going to do a deal. He's a billionaire, you know, he's, he's closed deals, he thinks that's what it's about. The world reacts and says, why should Ukraine give up any ground? Zelensky's appalled. If Donald Trump is going to do what people believe... Is he going to be able to force Ukraine to... I mean, are Ukraine going to listen to him? You've got to give up... Is that not then a victory to Putin? Why yeah. do you negotiate with terrorists? Wasn't this Putin who started this? One of the tricky bits about this whole conversation is we look at it through binary, black or white, give up or, or fight to the end. And the problem is, I went to, to Ukraine about a month ago, and I fully expected to hear the same resilience that I've been hearing throughout. Um, if you look at Maidan Square, tens of thousands of little flags flickering, that they have lost so many people. The price is a thousandth day anniversary tomorrow of the invasion. This has taken an awful toll on the people of Ukraine. And there is a view that says if you simply fight to the death, the danger is the Russians do a breakthrough and all of a sudden it isn't just 20% of Ukraine, actually they start to take significantly more. Are people beginning to turn on Zelensky? Are they beginning to feel that... that You've stood up for everything we've fought. We're just going to have to accept this in return for... Well, will they get anything out of a deal? Can you see if, if Trump does bring the parties to the table? Biden, uh, Biden, Putin will get some land, obviously some ground, whatever. What will the Ukrainians, in your mind, get? How can they possibly agree something that they lose out everything from? Well, we're, we're having a conversation which is almost distasteful by its very nature mm -hmm. because you're negotiating with Putin, which effectively says 
you've prevailed. And yeah, sorry to commit war, you can have our land. I mean, yeah, that's I what know. I'm saying. But, but the point is, what is the alternative? And that's the problem. We've got to be, we can't be idealist anymore. No. You've got to be hard nosed. And I think what's been interesting about um, what does victory look like now for Ukraine? Is it liberating all of their lands and Crimea? That is looking increasingly unlikely to be an achievable objective. If the answer, a bit like the Finland in the Winter War, the answer is that you lose 20% of your territory, but you gain sovereignty and guarantees of sovereignty and security for the remainder of your land, and you secure the financing that you need to rebuild your country, it might be a bit of Pyrrhic victory, but at least it gives you a foundation from which to build. I know what Pyrrhic means. Go on, then. Pyrrhic means... Uh, you lost an awful lot to get there. Yeah, it's not a, a, not as not a clear victory. It's somewhat shallow. You somewhat got there, hollow. but it cost an awful lot. That was you were quite impressed with that. I wasn't was you? very impressed. Yeah. Um, I just thought that the man in your ear was obviously yapping no, away. There's no man. There's no. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I pr Are you telling me that he did, him? Have you seen him? He wouldn't even know. He doesn't. He, do you know what he said? Do you know what the producer Ryan said to his missus at the weekend? She said to him Sunday night, "You've been terribly attentive this weekend. We've been out for lunch. We've been out for dinner. You've allowed me to go shopping. You've come with me and all that." He went, "Yeah, it was an international break for the football. I didn't have anything to do this." Okay. Um, very quickly on Trump. Yeah. Does it stir the world up, Middle East? Trump, we talked about Putin and Ukraine. I mean, um, Bibi, as he calls him, Netanyahu, apparently very, very close. Um, is Donald Trump just full of hot air or can he affect change in the crises across the world? So on the positive side, I think we have to, if you look back in history, when he first came to power, I'm going to build a, a wall, continuous wall to keep out Mexico. He didn't manage to finish that. He said, I'm going to solve the Middle East crisis. He didn't do that. And I'm going to sort out that little man from North Korea. <coughs> didn't do that didn't either. Do that either no. What it did do, though, it was a clear idea of his intent <coughs> yep. when he was going to be in power. And I suspect it's very difficult from this side. We can pour all the scorn we like. But there are some things like getting NATO to stand on its own two feet, getting people to pay their own way. I, I agree with that. I, I do think there are some I agree positive with that. Out. The one thing I'm concerned about, and this is me straying away, is in military leadership, let's face it, is meant to be the leader of the free world. When Colin Powell was asked what was the most important attribute, before the question was even finished, he said trust. You need to have the trust of your people to earn to be able to do leadership. And one of the attributes that, uh, that uh, you know, President Trump is looking for at the moment in his, his new team is acolytes. It's not people with any experience, it's people who are friendly and yeah. who have... It's, it's more in, 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 important to be loyalty than his credentials or experience. That's a really fine line between an autocracy and a democracy. Once you have an autocrat, what um, um, Putin famously does is he surrounds himself in loyalty. If you say boo to a goose, you're thrown out of a hotel window. The worry is here, I'm not being melodramatic for effect, but the worry is that the very foundations of the, of the, uh, the democracy that we live in, Churchill famously described it as the least worst option of running a country. <laughs> and actually what Trump is doing is challenging some of that. I think that could be healthy. I'm also very worried if you go too autocratic down that route, that has grave worries. You are a legend. We really appreciate you coming all the way from wherever you came from. Thank you. Uh, Sean Bell, uh, legend, military analyst, uh, only here on Talk.